Well, I'm back. Did some reading, and unfortunately, not quite sure exactly how this is going to work as far as this assembly goes, so I'm just going to take a guess. The reason why is because the end cap on all of the pumps in the manuals that I do have, they are all, I believe, of a newer style where the uh, instead of having these little discharge or high pressure uh, fittings that go on like this, they have an end cap that actually has the, the fittings right in it. It's typically what you'd see in a, I guess like a Rusa Master pump used, I think they call it DM series, uh, I think that was used in some diesel car engines like uh, some stuff that GM might have offered. So this end cap isn't made that way. On, on those, there's actually a big nut right here that has to be taken off. So I'm going to go on the assumption that uh, I can just take these four screws out and remove the end cap. So let's try that. All right, it wasn't too hard to unscrew these screws. And uh, a couple of these screws were really loose. Wow, look at the rust on that. That's not nice. So, yep. All right, I need a rag. All right, so here's the end cap assembly. We've got this big O-ring seal right here. And then we've got this little plate right here, which doesn't look like it's got any particular, let's see, does it have to go in a certain way? Uh, of course, one that was falling out when I was taking it off of here, and now I can't get it off. All right, just grab uh, something, hook something into one of these holes and pull up and you can get that to come off. Now you can see that screen assembly inside there. That's actually part of this part that screws in here. And we got this bolt on the bottom here. That just looks like it's just open to the bottom of that assembly. I wonder if that's a, a way to bleed that. Well, I'm certainly no expert, but to me that looks like that's got some wear indicated on it. And that's the uh, surface. It gets worn by the uh, the veins of the transfer pump just right here this is the transfer pump and what the transfer pump does the transfer pump sort of does the job of the lift pump in other fuel injection systems remember a while back earlier videos I was explaining how some of these Oliver 770's use the Bosch injection pump and the systems that used the Bosch injection pump had a separate mechanical lift pump that was run off the engine, uh, bolted to the side of the crankcase, and uh, was actually used to uh, bring the fuel into the uh, pump. Well, this system right here uses just gravity to feed the fuel into this part right here, and then this part actually charges the high-pressure section down the other end. So it's kind of neat that it can do it all. And the way it works is, as you can see, what happens is because of this uh, shape of this area right here, as this rotates, these veins will move out. So again, let me get a pointer. But you can see what happens is the, uh, the volume of area in here is larger than the volume in here. So what happens is 
say you've got this filled with fuel. As this rotates, this volume gets squeezed down to this smaller volume you see here, causing a pressure increase, which forces the fuel out. You know, when I was pointing with that uh, governor pin, a hunk of dirt fell right in there. That's a classic example of a no-no. All right, well, uh, this whole transfer pump assembly right here, I think is supposed to be able to slide out from this way. I think if I just invert this and tap it, I can get that to come out. So you say tapped it and it started to come out and then just got to pull it out evenly. And then of course these things all just kind of go haywire. They all sit in those slots right there. That's interesting. This is marked with a C on this side and two C's on this side. And what I'm willing to bet is that C is for counter, C is for clockwise, and C C is for counterclockwise. And I'm thinking that depending on which way this is inserted, you can change the orientation of this pump from clockwise to counterclockwise operation. It's just a guess, but I just cleaned this up a little bit. It looked like it had rust on it, but. It was uh, came right off pretty easy, and again, the, you know, the fuel system was was neglected. Maintenance on the fuel system was neglected on this on this um, tractor. Judging from the uh, water and rust and stuff that I found in the fuel system when I was changing out the filters, so I wouldn't be surprised if this pump has seen some damage due to water getting in there. This part of the transfer pump doesn't want to come out. If I was pulling on it, that's not doing it. I made a hole right here as I rotate this. There's a screw right there that comes into register. And so that hole might be so you can remove that screw, but I kind of doubt it. I'm wondering that screw might actually be an adjustment. Um, that might be your fuel adjustment, I think. Um, the adjustment that actually regulates how much fuel uh, is delivered with every uh, firing of the pump. I'll explain that more once I get that assembly out so you can see it. So I think right now what I'm going to do is these head locating bolts right here here and I think the one on the bottom and see whether or not I could pull this whole head out from the body of the pump and I'm not even sure if this is a head locating bolt like the other two are or not it seems to be in the right position to be one so I removed it that's got an O-ring at the base of it right there and then the other two that open bolt I already loosened. One of these came out pretty easy, the other one was really tight. Now, I wonder how hard it's going to be to remove that head from the body. Put the camera down so it just slides out. wiggles a little bit, but it doesn't want to come out. So now I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out this bolt right here. So I'm not sure how far this extends into here. Maybe that also is going to Okay, this one's got a crush washer on it. I wonder if that's uh, supposed to be there, or is that another uh, add-on to replace some other type of seal? Try another pull. Well, that doesn't want to come out, but as I pull on it, I can see movement in here. So I'm thinking that this fork, this uh, governor lever, lever right here, 
getting hung up on something. And it looks to me like the shaft that it rides on can be completely removed by taking out off these brass nuts right here. So I'm thinking if I take those nuts off or one of those nuts off, I should be able to slide that shaft out. Once the shaft is stuck on, I should be able to take this whole government assembly out. Dampening when I come here somewhere. And I'm looking for it. Notorious part that uh, breaks up. And uh, when it breaks, the little tiny pieces that we break off, they clog that little glass ball check valve and uh, can cause uh, the engine to quit. I believe when it's happening, it can cause an excessive pressure to pull up in this area. twisting motion to get it popped free. So basically what you've got is this, this O-ring right here that seals this and uh, it's a tight fit. So you know, the, uh, it slides out pretty easily. 